Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Hello everybody. Long time no see. As you might have gathered by the title, I bought another Mini. It'd be that one. Some of you will recognise it from uh, previous videos where we were um, doing repairs and it was still Steve's car. Um, but yeah, it came up for sale and what can I say? Couldn't turn it down. There is a, a long story behind it whereby Steve was getting very uh, low ball offers from people that were basically wanting to strip the car um, do the usual repair, respray, new commercial interior and then flog it for a vast amount of money because at the end of the day it is a 1071 Cooper S yeah so Steve rang me one night just to say that um, he'd had some low offers because I'd, I'd done some research and told him how much it could possibly be worth but he didn't believe me oh it's a bit dark that he didn't believe me and uh, he put it up for sale without telling me how much he was offering it for or how much he was looking for and then a couple of individuals started off with a price up here and then each time they came back to look at it they found more and more wrong with it and the price went down and down and down and down and the last offer was uh, in the region of 10 grand for a mark one uh, cooper now there is some um, question marks over its history because the only history we've got is that from when steve bought it he did the dvla search because he could still do that at the time and it listed all the previous owners and all that sort of stuff but the problem is you can't do that anymore so all i've got is history of from approximately 1980 something i think and it's hard to work out from some of the paperwork and it was over grimsby way which is where the car came from and it stayed in the same area since well between when it was bought originally um, to uh, approximately 1993 I think it was when Steve bought it so uh, yeah my 1071 S um, right so going back to this the little bit I alluded to there is some question marks about its history in that the chassis number that's on the vehicle the body and the body and the body numbers and, and all that sort of stuff match but there's a discrepancy between the paper record and the actual number printed on the car um, which is quite a common thing actually um, there's quite a few um, tales of when the records were digitized and all that sort of stuff how somebody in their infinite wisdom changed a single letter and in this case they changed uh, the K at the front of the edge or front of the chassis number to a M for Morris which was common many cars have had it done it's how some uh, Mark III Cooper S's were just down as 850s and stuff like that because you know people DVLA was probably well I can't say they're worse than worse then than they are now because that's impossible because they're atrocious nowadays um, but yeah simple mistake and that sort of screws up its paperwork trail um, to a certain extent but yeah all the numbers on the car match there is a body number still to find but it's underpaint and i because it's still in show season as today i'm not going to start uh, stripping the paint off to find it um there is body numbers in other places but they've gone because the car's had repairs in in the past it's had flaws it's had a front end it's had all sorts but in the past 30 years all it's had is a respray or blow over <laughs> So right so what are the plans for the 1071 s number one give it a name so we've got austin we've now got morris it helps to um differentiate when you've got far too many cars you've got to start giving them a name so you know what the hell you're talking about instead of the red one or the orange one so morris 
So Morris, the 1071S, uh, what have we done so far? Well, we started the debodging process, which basically means going through top to bottom, back to front, underside to the tops, finding out what the hell's going on with it, fixing stuff, and just generally putting it right. As I said, Steve's had it for 30 years and he hasn't really done much maintenance. I mean, we did his van for him. Uh, that never made it onto YouTube because we've been that busy doing people's cars, that we customer cars that you can't put them on YouTube because people don't want stuff filming. So that's why I've not done many um, YouTube vids in a while. Uh, but yeah, we did his van and it was the same. Um, just bits just bodged together, not properly assembled. Um, and we spent a good amount of time on his van and fixed the engine up and the clutch that was leaking and all that sort of stuff. And his uh, son has it now, because it was his son's first car, and he says it's better than it's ever been. So they're keeping that. But the uh, Morris here is just the same in that, for example, the, the, the rear lights, um, the issue with those is, you know, normally they're held in with three screws, aren't they? To those that know. But on this one, there was only two screws per side. And even on one of those pair, which are self, long self tappers rather than the proper threaded ones, um, the form that goes between the lens and, and, the, and the lens body, uh, you know, the outer plastic lens, that was missing on one side, there on the other. And one of the indicator lenses was cracked uh, with a big hole in it. So it's just stuff like that. You just, you know, start ordering parts and shopping around to make sure you're not getting ripped off. So rear lights were to fix, uh, put a liner on the inside the boot, new boot seal, new door seals. Uh, we've got a new rear window screen seal to go in and finishing strip. Um, new door locks because this car was the blue tack car in that so much of it was held together with blue tack. I mean, the, the boot lock was absolutely knackered because we drilled it out about five, 10 years ago to fix it for him and he's never had it replaced since. The driver's door lock did work, but with any key. And the passenger side was the type that didn't have a lock, but it was just held in with blue tack. So you basically just pulled the handle out. Um, so that was the doors and then all the sliding channels needed replacing um, and obviously the window seals that go around that box those is a kit from mini spares uh, what else have we done oh there was there was some holes in the floor on the inner sill um, that were brought up on the MOT as failure points uh, yeah whatever so we patched the floors because it's already a patch of many you know that was going to be its other name patch morris because the floor's got so many patches on it so we were going to go through the floor but we just decided ideally in, at some point in the future it needs one of those complete floor panels that's outer sail inner sail doorsteps all that sort of stuff you need it needs all that but for now just to keep it solid safe and usable we just patched the floors on the inner sills uh, three places uh, we did track on ends they missed those on the MOT because because they missed those so we did those uh, new wiper blades and wiper arms uh, because the wiper blades were falling apart so it was always going to fail the MOT on that uh, rear fog lights still to connect up because for some reason they disconnected it I'm not really sure why uh, we've done oil and filter uh, I've modified the grill as well because um, the idea was I wanted the grill to be so you could just take it off with two of the normal grill screws and then access it for servicing but the problem was that it's got these big massive steel construction for holding all the spotlights in place um, and they stop they were stopping the grill from coming out so I've altered, modified that so it's easy to take off and I now take off the grill using the two screws, two grill buttons at either end. But it still doesn't come off far enough to get in there because it catches on the overriders. Now the overriders were held in with overlong screws that were touching the, the valance because they're at a funny angle. So shorten that so they fit. 
but now it's just a case of getting all the little bits and pieces buttoned up in the engine way there's a whole load of random shit going on there's random stuff going on with the binnacle because it's the wrong binnacle and the wrong binnacle's been bodged into place which has damaged the original binnacle that mounts to your bulkhead which is like the cream one that your speedo sits in then it has two brackets that come off that then there's a metal plate then there's the binnacle well it's got the wrong binnacle the metal plate was missing and all the screws that were holding it all together were all just self tappers just screwed in randomly so that needs fixing completely the gauge is in there the temperature gauge on the left hand side isn't connected up because it's got a combined water temperature oil pressure gauge but when I was dismantling all the binnacle to try and repair it I realised that the water temperature gauge is broken so what I'm going to do is replace that one with an oil pressure gauge so it'll have the correct gauges either side of the centre of the speedo then I've got the uh, fancy um, speedwell rev count wear and two gauges either side of that that don't do anything uh, one is voltmeter one is amps i'll probably connect them to the voltmeter so i'm going to see what sort of voltage it's kicking out because this thing is that old it's still got a dynamo in it so i've also been looking at one of these alternators in a dynamo case so it looks period and looks correct but it has better charging um, and talking of charging i've started changing a few of the little bulbs and things with leds to reduce the power consumption although i'm not going to be out in the dark i still want it to be you know not drawing as much when you've got your side lights on and that if you're traveling down the motorway somewhere and it's raining you want your side lights on so i've changed those to leds So, blue tack car. What was held in with blue tack? Well, that speedo gauge you've just seen was held in. Uh, rev count where speed well rev count where was held in with blue tack. Most of the dash was held in with blue tack. Some of the vinyl on the dash panels is held in with blue tack. And then we go to these panels here on the uh, on the door and they were held in with blue tack as well um i've screwed these ones in place now properly because they're nice shaped panels but that was held in with blue tack so was this one and then as you as you went down there's the proper bin liners in there now because they were in the bottom but in the bottom of the doors was about i would say three to four inches of uh, polystyrene which then the door liner was rested on top of and then in this last little section in the door pocket in here there was a bit of wood held in with blue tack um, which covered it all and held it all in place so there was all sorts of random shite in the bottom of the door pocket once you start dis disassembling it pens some money got some money back off this car um, there was tire pressure gauge there was a 10 mil spanner um, well there was all sorts of random stuff in the bottom of there and then the door pocket over the other side was just the same where the, the fire extinguisher that you've seen already the fire extinguisher was held in with blue tack and then again the panels around it were all held in with blue tack and then in the bottom of that one there was two door liners the proper one and then a section of one and then underneath that there was two lots of bits of wood yes then there was some blue tack holding the actual door liner trim in place at the bottom edge so yeah blue tack car all over so now we've got a good stack of blue tack out with this car that we can keep for just whenever um, it's good for damping down vibrations and stuff I also think some of the chrome trim on the outside of the car is held in with blue tack uh, so I'll try not to disturb that but uh, yeah Steve did like his blue tack and um, it seemed to fix a lot of things
but uh, yeah we're gradually uh, getting round it all I mean every time I think of something on the car there's other things are fixed like the gator on here was loose there was one screw holding it instead of the four so you fix that it's got a quick shift on it which I don't particularly like to be honest but you know oh yeah more, more blue tack the ears for the heater at either side will help with blue tack um, there'll be more I'm sure I'll find more as I'm going through it but yeah it just had 30 years of neglect is the wrong word but a lot of years of not intensive maintenance that would like what we would normally do on our cars let's put it that way and god only knows what bodges it's had before that you know we don't even know if it's the correct shell for the car at the end of the day because it's had so many repairs there's a lot of stuff that on it is correct for a 1071s and a lot of the parts in it are correct but is it the original shell well, no idea and do i care not really um like in the boot there's the uh, fixings for the boot board but you can see they've been moved upwards to allow for a spare a bigger spare wheel because they've been reattached you can see where this original spot wells were drilled out but uh, it still doesn't work because the, the spare tire that's in is still too tall and you, the boot board still doesn't fit and it's obviously the original boot board because it's got the original carpet and stuff in it some of the carpet in here looks original some of the sound deadening is original it's that hessian type sound deadening but it's just you know it's a car that's been used and abused and crashed and repaired and god only knows what yeah because like talk about crash there's in the is it the cantrail above my head up there that's got a dint in it yeah it's just full of patina 